Weather is all about where it happens. If this kind of rain falls in a field or a forest, we don't worry too much. But as we bury that field and forest under more and more concrete and asphalt, urban flash flooding is gonna become a real problem. Late August brought an event that could have been a billion dollar disaster for the GTA, except the location of the precipitation was just north of the urbanized area. That purple bullseye, that is radar derived over 200 millimeters of rainfall, thankfully just north of where the real extent of the greater Toronto area lies. Even without climate change, this is a present risk. We have to be aware of flooding. It's happened before. It happened even before we started to warm the world. It's just that now the odds are increasing. They're going to happen. And the more that we spread out, the more vulnerable we are uh, to this fast runoff of heavy rain. Dr. Jennifer Drake, a professor of civil engineering at Carleton, says the math is simple. As uh, the GTA expands and urban sprawl in general, the likelihood that there will be a section or a community that will have an extreme event just naturally is going to also increase. However, thanks to a famous storm in the 1950s, Ontario implemented a scheme for urban planning that can be used as a model for the future across Canada really lucky in Ontario because we have really strong planning, particularly related to floodplains. And a lot of this is a result of Hurricane Hazel and the creation of conservation authorities. And, and what makes conservation authorities so unique as a regulatory body is that they're landscape based. They own and regulate uh, development and actions in the floodplain. And so today, um, we do not develop those floodplains. We don't allow people to move into them. But I think it would be foolish to say that we've got everything sorted out. Uh, it's a big challenge and something that I think across the world we're trying to figure out.